Hello everyone. In this session, we would look at issuing bond at a discount. In the prior session, we looked at issuing bond at par. A bond is issued at a discount when its issue price is lower, when the company sell that bond at lower than its face or par value. So remember that $100, the par value is 100, the face value is 100. Think about selling that 100 for less than 100, for $97. But why? Why would this happen for a bond? The key reason is the relationship between what the company is offering, the contract rate, the coupon rate, and the ongoing market rate. If the bond contract rate, if the company is offering the investors a rate that's lower than the market rate, then no investors will buy the bond at face value. Why? Because they can go somewhere else and buy that bond. So to make the bond attractive, the market itself will turn the bond into a discount bond. The issuing company would sell it less than its par value. Now, there's a way in computing this discount. In other words, there's a formula, a time value formula to compute that discount, that discounted amount. You don't have to worry about this in financial accounting. So if the company is offering 6% and the ongoing rate is 8%, the bond will sell at a discount. Now in this session, don't worry how I come up with that price because that difference is essentially what the company received less is basically interest cost. And we're gonna amortize that interest cost over the life of the bond. We'll see that in the example. But for simplicity, as I just said, don't worry about how I give you the price. If you want to go to my intermediate accounting, but for simplicity, know that the bond is issued at a discount, whatever that discount is, it's less than 100%, 98.75, 93.68, 94.75. It's less than 100%. That's all what you have to know. You have to know the journal entries. What do we do with the discount? What is the discount and what happened at maturity? Let's go ahead and get started in issuing a discounted bond. And next we would look at, you guessed it, premium bond. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. So let's take a look at this example. Assume Nike issues bond with a par value of 200,000. Similar to the prior example, we, we want to borrow, Nike wants to borrow 200,000. It's a 6% annual contact, contract rate or coupon rate or printed rate. Three year term, just like the bonds that we looked at earlier. These bonds sells at a discount price of 97.5. It means 97.5% or 200,000 times 0.975. This is how much cash the company will receive, which is 195,000. So payment of the par value will be 200,000 at the end of the life of the bond. Although the company receives today 150,000, they always have to pay back the face value and they would always record the bond at face value. Two, the semi-annual semi -annual interest payment, 200,000 par value times the interest rate times one half. That's the cash amount. Now we will see that the cash amount that we paid every period will be different than the interest expense. Why? This is what we will be illustrating in this concept. Why that's different than when the bond was issued at par and the cash was equal to the interest. So let's first record the issuance of this bond. How much cash did we receive? 150. 
we debit cash 150 the bonds payable is always recorded at face value which is 200,000 since we received $5,000 less than the face value $5,000 less in cash we create a new account called discount on bonds payable this is a new account what type of account discount on bonds payable it's a contra liability what does it represent what's the meaning of this it represents prepaid interest what do I mean by that the company is promising to pay back 200,000 but they received 195 it means the 5,000 is the cost of borrowing the cost of money what do we call the cost of money interest now this is interest that we got charged up front five thousand dollar when are we going to record the actual interest we are going to take this discount and amortized to interest expense so let's first establish the bonds we have a two hundred thousand dollar bond for now bonds payable and we have a discount of five thousand dollar discount of five thousand dollar what's going to happen next is this we are going to amortize this bond amortize not the bond amortize the discount over a period of how long six periods so we're get, we, we are going to take five thousand dollar divide the five thousand dollar by six and every period we will be amortizing to interest expense eight hundred and thirty three dollars so every period every interest expense payment we are going to reduce the bonds payable by eight hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cent and we're going to do this six times by the time we do it six times the discount will go away now from a from an interest expense perspective which we will see later we are we will be making six payments of six thousand that's equal to 36,000 that's the cash plus we have 5,000 of interest expense that we will be recording when we transfer it from the discount to the interest expense so the total interest expense will be 41,000 for this bond let me show you everything that what I did on the screen we recorded 200,000 with a liability but we received 195 today we will be making six payments uh, of interest expense and we have to add 5,000 of interest expense throughout the life of the bond. Therefore, the total interest expense will be 41,000. We will be amortizing $833.33 each period. The best way is to show you the journal entry when we make this interest expense payment. When we record the interest expense think of it as two entries first the cash amount we have to debit interest expense six thousand credit cash six thousand why because this is the contract we have to pay six thousand dollar now what else do we have to do we're not done yet remember we have to amortize five hundred eighty three eight hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cent what does that mean it means we have to credit discount this period eight hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cent and when we credit this we are going to debit we're gonna add this eight thirty three since we credited discount it's gonna be transferred to interest expense eight thirty three point thirty three therefore we debit interest expense again eight hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cent and we credit discount a thirty three point thirty three now what I did is I combined those entry therefore you debit interest expense six thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cent of which you credit you amortize eight thirty three point thirty three in discount you credit cash eight thirty three now what's gonna happen is this and I want you to pay kind of mentally walk through this so you see what's what's going to happen this entry would repeat itself how many times six different times why six different times it's a three-year bond it's a three-year bond and it's a semi-annual payment but be first we go to the second payment here's what I want to show you 
Now, if we had 5,000 of a discount and we deducted 833, what's left is 4,167 of an amortized discount. Now, this an amortized discount will give us the book carrying value. Now, what's the carrying value of a discounted bond? It's a 200,000 face value minus the unamortized discount, which is 4,167. Again, I'm, I'm rounding here just, just to make sure, make sure you know the formula. And the carrying value after the first payment is 195,833. Now, we're done with the first payment. Let's make the second payment. When we make the second payment, we it's the same entry. And as a result, we credit discount on bond 833. As a result, the, the prior balance of 4167, we deduct from it 833.33. It's going to give us $3,333.34 for rounding. This is now the remaining unamortized discount. Now, what's the new carrying value? It's 200,000 minus 3,334 which is if we do that, the carrying value will be 196.666 rounding. Notice the carrying value, notice the carrying value is going up. Now, let me show you the amortization schedule since I flipped to the next slide. When the bond was issued, the carrying value was 195. Why? Because it's 200,000 minus 5,000 of an amortized discount, minus 5,000 which will give us the carrying value of 195. We make the first payment, we credit cash, uh, we credit cash, we reduce amortization of 833 and our total interest expense is $6,833.33 and the carrying value becomes 195,833. And I showed you why, because I deduct the remaining and amortize discount, which is 4167 Then I make the second payment, $6,000, I amortize 833 total interest expense $6,833.33. Now my discounted bond goes up to 196667 which is, this is what I showed you here, rounding 667 and the process repeats itself. I make the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth payment. By the time I get to the sixth payment, the bond always go back to the face value. So what I want you to see is for a discounted bond, the bond will go up to the face value. Why? Because it started as a discount and it will go up. The bond carrying value go up, go back up to the go back up to the face value. Now the last payment, guess what? I have a bond of 200,000. Let me change colors. Remember when I issued this bond, I had a, before I showed you the bonds, what's going to happen after six payments here, the discount will be zero. So because I am going to amortize this discount. Now the discount is gone. Now I have to also get rid of the bonds. So remember, when I established the bonds, I recorded the bond at 200,000. Now I am going to pay it off. I am going to debit bonds payable, 200,000, make the balance equal to zero, and pay it off with cash. So this is what we did. We established a bonds payable, a discounted bond. We established a discount. We, make, we made the interest payment, and we accounted for the amortized discount. And remember, the amortized discount increased the interest expense. Notice, the interest expense is more than the cash amount. Why? Because every period we make an interest payment, we have to add some of that discount that we lost when we initially recorded the bond. Therefore, interest expense is higher than the cash payment. What do we need to do next? The next thing we will look we would look at is a bond issued at a premium, and we'll do the same thing issue the bond, record the original issuance, interest payment, amortizing the premium, looking at the amortization schedule, then paying off the bond. Stay motivated, stay focused, bonds is important, and to the next session.